All right, welcome back to our channel, Two Guys Take on Real Estate. We're pulling up to a foreclosure auction today in sunny Massachusetts. No, this isn't old footage that we just got around uploading. It's actually the month of April here, and I had to put on my winter booties today to come out and uh, kick some auction butt in the snow. And uh, we're really, really hoping that we see something today uh, that really works for us. We're doing our due diligence right now as we speak. Matt is wandering around, talking, making calls, trying to get back tax information, water bill information, condo association fees information. There's a lot that goes into that and we're trying to cram it all in right now before the auction kicks off. Don't miss any of this, stick around. This is a great time for you to hit the like and subscribe buttons. We're gonna go take a look around this condo, see what we can see. But remember, when you're buying these things, you're basically bidding on that mystery box. You don't get to see the inside. It's not like we're here to get a guided tour. We're gonna see pretty much what you would see if you showed up to go trick or treating. Probably less, because they're not giving out candy and they're not answering the door. The good thing is, you probably have a pretty good idea about what the insides of, not necessarily this one is, but something very similar to it, because there's a good chance on Zillow or one of the websites where something has been listed, sold, or rented lately, uh, you'll see interior photos. They're all gonna be kind of cookie cutter, kind of the same. So we don't really get to see the inside of the home, but we can get a pretty good idea what the layout's gonna be. The other great thing, part of doing due diligence and figuring out what the ARV is of this is comps are gonna be pretty easy because chances are some of these things have sold somewhat recently and that should be a great, great example of what a comparable value would be. We're really seeing and you're seeing what we get to see before we maybe shell out tens of thousands of dollars, hopefully buying something that can make us a lot of money. Well, good news is we actually found the condo association, found the management company that works with them. They are supposedly sending a representative and we're just trying to find who the heck the representative is so we can actually find out what the condo fees is because we've got our numbers done. We have an ARV, we found a couple sales, they were dated, luckily I was able to get the MLS number, look up, you know, kind of reverse look up, see the old listing, get some old pictures because they often delete them now. And I was able to find some pictures so we know that they were, the sales were mediocre at best, so let's just say as far as condition. So we know if we do a full renovation, which we would on this vacant condo, uh, that we can get some extra value and you know, how much that's unfortunately there's not great comps for that but we're kind of being conservative because that's key we have that so we're thinking like 210 arv we're kind of backing out all of our numbers because there's also a buyer's premium of five percent to the auctioneer so that's something to keep in mind some do that sometimes it's one percent sometimes five percent almost like a commission to a real estate agent all that we're looking at probably a bid number of about 100 grand but the problem is i don't know what the condo fees are they owe 15,000 in back taxes. So yeah, you gotta imagine there's something owed in condo fees. They're not paying the taxes, why would they pay the condo fees, right? But I don't know. So I'm hoping to find this person soon so we can get a final number because otherwise I think I'm gonna have to be conservative and throw out maybe another five or six grand off to kind of balance that out. Otherwise, I don't wanna get stuck with all of a sudden a $5,000 bill. <laughs> so that's kind of where we're at right now. Well, the rehab budget, based on looking at the other photos for some of the other properties, because I can't see inside, I saw the condenser for the air conditioner in the back. It looks like to be the original. So that's going to have to be updated. So I'm assuming everything else is, needs to be updated. The kitchens, the, there's carpet in the other one. So I'm thinking LVP throughout. So we're going to have to rip all that out, put LVP flooring in, full repaint. Uh, we're going to upgrade, gut the kitchen. It looks like the other two that sold had laminate countertops with granite in or or something like that and then uh, the bathroom was completely dated and we're looking at old photos from another listing so therefore you can consider that they're more likely not same when they built these condos they often use the same materials uh, and try to make them standardized so we'll do basically a full remodel on the bathroom and as well as the kitchen and I think that will bring us to the highest ARV value which was hard to find out but because we don't really have great comps for that but I think that's kind of where we're coming at and that's kind of where we come up with a 210 maybe we'll get a little bit more um, but we need to be conservative here. We don't know a lot of unknowns here. We don't get, couldn't get inside, we have condo fees, and we don't have great cops. So <laughs> a lot of unknowns here. So we take a conservative approach in this case. Well, I mean, there's quite a few bidders. I, I thought we were gonna be the only ones, by the way. We first showed up here for quite a while until like the last five minutes, all of a sudden everyone kind of showed up. I thought we had a high chance of getting this one because no one was here, but now it looks like we got a bunch of people showing up. I think we got at least three or four more bidders. About a hundred thousand to start it. Hundred thousand dollars I have. One hundred five is gonna make it now. One hundred five. I got now. One ten. 
One ten is the next bidder's gonna give me one ten. I got one ten now. One fifteen. One fifteen is the next bidder's gonna give me one fifteen. I got one ten. I need one fifteen. Somebody want to say one eleven? One hundred ten. One eleven now. One twelve. One twelve. One twelve. I got now. One thirteen. One thirteen. I got now. One fourteen. Are there any advances on one hundred thirteen thousand? One hundred thirteen thousand going once. One hundred thirteen thousand going twice. Final call. Oh. One fourteen. <laughs> that's okay. That's good. That's good. I got one fourteen. I need one fifteen. One fifteen. Yes or no? One fifteen. I got now one sixteen. One sixteen, Robin. Yes or no? One sixteen. I got now one seventeen. Are there any advances on one hundred sixteen thousand dollars? One hundred sixteen thousand going once, twice. Final call. Property is sold for one hundred sixteen thousand dollars. I thank you all for attending this auction. Please keep an eye on our website for upcoming sales. We're going to get there with 15 minutes to spare to the next auction, but let me explain what just happened and what mistake I made. So, well, I'm going to blame Kevin on this one, by the way. So the actual person that was holding or actually was called doing the order of notice was the condo association. This was a 187A. I know that probably just means nothing to you, but 187A is basically about the condo and the chapter in the statute for them to be able to recoup their condo fees. And so there was about, and it was in the actual memorandum of sale and stuff like that, that was provided by the auctioneer. It was $24,000 and change, but that gets paid from the sale because it's them actually having the foreclosure. So honestly, if no one had started bid, he started the bidding at hundred grand, but reasonably they should have started it at $25,000. So if no one else showed up and if I just, if let's just say if I shut my mouth and he, you know, I could have waited and he would have gone down to 24,000 and change or $25,000 and I could have won that condo for 25,000 if no one showed up. Clearly a lot of people were there. He started at 100, people jumped on it. That was my number, that was my max number, 100 grand. So I didn't even bid. And then it went up to 116, which I don't think makes sense personally because 116, 5% buyer's premium, so you're looking at like another six grand on top of that right there. So you got that, plus you've got $15,000 in back taxes and municipal liens that have to be paid at the close. And then you have to renovate the place. I, I think it was a flipper. She was bidding, she was from a management company, so I'm pretty sure she's not buying it for herself. I've seen her at a few other auctions, so I really think she was actually looking to get a flip. So maybe she had a different ARV than us. You know, one thing we were thinking 210, 215. It uh, doesn't seem like it leaves a lot of room because then you're still going to have closing costs. You're going to have commissions for once you go to sell it. You're, I mean, why all that effort to make, what, 20 grand if that? That's my take. That's kind of what happened there. So once again, taking a little bit more time because once again, I was just kind of running through having my VA put together a lot of the stuff and I didn't triple check on who was actually foreclosing. And now I'm spending all this time trying to find the condo fees when it was the condo association for closing. Not, and not every auctioneer is as do as thorough as Corey. That's Posnick Auction. That's who was hosting the auction. And he generally, he's got a nice packet. He's very, he also markets, it's a lot, uh, his, he markets his auctions really well too. That's why they generally have a higher attendance, which pros and cons, <laughs> you know, get a lot of diligence, but you also got a lot of bidders typically. That's what happened here. But now we are running with limited time to Agawam to, for this other single family house that, I think it could be a really good deal. So let's go. I mean, it seems like some other bidders, I, I should have shut my mouth because I clearly let one of the other guys know and now he's probably gonna be probably following us right now, isn't he? Trying to, so he can go to the auction as well. So yeah, another tip out there for people that are gonna go to auctions, keep your mouth shut to the other bidders. <laughs> as though, then again, I'm telling you guys right here on this channel all about it. So if you're local, don't go to my auctions. Come on, stay away. Blood twist. All right, well, as my two-year-old son would say, womp womp. So this one just got the call, it's postponed. So we ran all the way here for nothing. Well, but not for nothing. We're gonna take a little bit of time to still do some due diligence because this auction will come back. We probably filed maybe bankruptcy or something like that and got a little stay of execution, but might as well do some due diligence while we're here and see what we see. Right, Kev? Yes. There we go. Look at that. that a man of very few I words. I wasn't listening, but it just doesn't make any sense to argue. <laughs> So we're looking at this house, got postponed. We were just talking to someone else. It's actually been postponed three other times. So we got dated windows, dated siding. 
the roof actually looks halfway decent, but it's covered with partial snow, so we don't get a good clue on that. Garage needs to be sided, new door. It is occupied, so that's something to keep in mind. And I mean, it's a small little house, but I, mean, I love the neighborhood. Most of the other houses have been fixed up, except that one. I hate that ugly green. Yeah, it's really postponed. It's really, really, Kev. So, yeah, I mean, I guess now we just we have a better idea of what's going on and live to fight another day. All right, so there you have it. The auction did get postponed. Yep. We, uh, we rushed all the way out here for nothing, but it gives us an opportunity to do some due diligence. Correct. Not a bad thing. And, and you know more about that if you checked out our book, Foreclosures Unlocked, on Amazon. You know, it makes a great gift, too. It does. So maybe buy a few copies. My stocking stopper. And we're coming out with two new videos every week, so stay tuned. Make sure you hit that bell notification icon so you can see all the new ones we're coming out with. If you have any questions about foreclosures, don't ask Kevin, ask Matt in the comments below, and we'll see you on the next video.